this video, we're going to show you how to install a Tusk Quiet Guide skid plate onto a Polaris Razor 900. The installation steps will be the same for the 900 Trail, the 900 XC, and the S900, which is what we're working on today. The Tusk Quiet Glide skid plate is a great way to protect your investment. It provides significant coverage and protection over your stock skid plate, and it's made of heavy duty UHMW so it won't dent or break like aluminum. It's also a lot quieter than aluminum and it allows you to glide over the obstacles. So the first thing we need to do is gain access to the underside of the machine. You can see that we've got this machine sitting up on some ramps. You'll want to safely support your machine in order to gain access to the undercarriage and prevent causing any damage or injury to yourself or the machine. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the stock skid plate. You wanna keep all the stock hardware organized as most of it's gonna be reused on the new skid plate. After that, we're gonna open up our new skid plate and you'll wanna make sure all the pieces and hardware are accounted for. You'll have a complete list of this attached to your instructions. The first part of the new skid plate we're gonna install is the front differential skid. And to do that, we're gonna first slide the double hole threaded plate up into position. You'll want the two threaded holes in the plate sitting directly over these two holes in the frame. We're gonna use two of the provided quarter inch washers and install them on two of the stock M6 by 20 bolts with self-cutting threads. These are gonna be used to attach the front part of this front diff piece. So with our drill set to slow speed, we'll start each of these bolts into the existing holes on the frame. And we're just gonna leave both of these bolts loose for now. Next, we're gonna move back and make sure the two threaded holes in the plate are lined up with the two rearmost holes in this front diff piece. And then we can install the two provided 5 16 by one inch countersunk Allen bolts to secure the rear end of this piece. And again, we're just gonna leave these two bolts loose. We'll tighten them up a little later in the video. The next part of this install is to attach the two frame brackets to the top side of the main skid piece. So first we'll just line up the holes and then we'll attach it using the eight provided 5 16 by 5 8 countersunk Allen bolts. We'll go ahead and start each of those by hand and then finish them off with the ratchet. Once we have all four of those bolts tight, we can move over to the other side and do the same exact thing. And then this center section is ready to be installed on the machine. We recommend using a jack or another person to help you locate that main skid up into place. We're gonna start the three factory bolts with washers into the three recessed holes in the center of the skid plate. And we're just gonna leave these finger tight for now. Those three bolts should hold the skid plate in place so we can install the other hardware. And we're first gonna move to the rear end of this piece and using the two provided M6 by 20 millimeter countersunk Allen bolts, we'll thread both of those into the outer holes on the rear end of this center piece. And again, we're just gonna leave all this hardware loose. After we've got both of those rear bolts loosely installed, we can move back up front and attach the front end of this center skid plate piece using two of the provided 5 16 by one inch countersunk Torx bolts with self-cutting threads. We have a T40 Torx bit on our drill and we're just gonna run these bolts up into existing holes in the frame. And again, we're just gonna leave them loose for now. The next step in this install is to move to the side of the razor and we're gonna remove the two side frame bolts using a T40 Torx bit. Once you have both those bolts removed, you'll wanna lift up on the bottom of the skid plate and reinstall the two factory frame bolts through the brackets and into the frame. At this point, we can tighten these bolts down after we install them. You may need to use a jack again to lift the skid plate up into position and line up the hole. Now we're gonna repeat those same steps to install this side of the skid plate as well. And again, we can tighten these side bolts down all the way. The next step is to locate the following hardware two M8 by 50 millimeter hex head bolts, two M8 by 40 millimeter countersunk Allen head bolts, two M8 flat washers, and two billet tube clamps. Starting on the passenger side of the machine with the wheels turned all the way to the left, we've slid the washers onto the hex head bolts and positioned the tube clamps on the frame rail directly over the angled lip on front of the center skid plate piece. From there, we're gonna thread the hex head bolt up into the billet clamp through the front hole and all we need to do is just thread that in a couple turns for now. From there, we're gonna again go back to our floor jack. You see we've got a piece of wood on it. We're gonna position that close to the clamp that we just installed in the skid plate. We're gonna use the floor jack to raise the skid plate up against the frame rail. Now using the bolt that we have partially threaded into the billet clamp, we're gonna use that to align the threaded hole in the clamp 
up with the hole in the skid plate. Once you have them lined up, go ahead and install the countersunk bolt into that back hole. Next, we're gonna tighten down the countersunk bolt until it completely bottoms out on the clamp. Once that's tight, we can move to the top bolt and suck that front lip of the skid plate up against the frame rail. Next, we'll position the jack the same way on the driver's side of the machine and use that to install the clamp and hardware with the same steps we just demonstrated. Remember to tighten the countersunk bolt until it bottoms out on the clamp and then go ahead and tighten the hex head bolt on top, sucking the skid plate tightly up against the frame rail. We're now ready to move to the rear section of the skid plate. There are two holes near the rear of the frame that need to be tapped. So using one of the factory thread cutting bolts, we're gonna run that bolt up through each one of these holes to create new threads for the new bolts. After we have that done, we can position the rear skid section up into place. There's a lip at the front that we'll want to slide underneath the middle section of the skid plate, and then we can attach it using one of the stock bolts and washer into the frontmost recessed hole. We'll leave that finger tight for now. Next, we need to locate the four provided M6 by 25 millimeter flanged hex head bolts, along with four of the stock skid washers, and each one of those will run through one of the four holes in the rear end of the skid plate, and then through one of the four provided UHMW spacers and up into the frame. We'll leave this loose for now and it'll be easier to position the remaining UHMW spacers as you install the other three bolts. With all the bolts a little loose, we'll want to slide the rear section forward so it's sitting tight against the main skid piece. And then we go ahead and snug those rear bolts down. Next, we'll use the two provided single threaded hole plates, and those are gonna sit on top of the frame right over the middle holes in this rear skid section. The two provided 5 16 by one and a half inch countersunk Allen head bolts will run up through the hole, through the frame, and into the threaded hole in each of these plates. We'll repeat that process for both those holes, and you may have to hold the threaded plate until the bolt starts to tighten up. The last step of this install is to drill the four remaining holes. Two in the front of the rear skid section and two in the rear of the main skid section. When completing this step, it's important to drill slow and make sure you don't push the drill bit any farther than you need to. We do this to avoid causing any damage to components sitting above it. We're gonna install the four remaining 5 16 by one inch countersunk Torx bolts with self cutting threads into each one of these holes. And the only thing left to do is go back through and tighten up all the hardware. For this, it's important to use hand tools and avoid over tightening any of these bolts. Once everything is tight, you're ready to ride. You can find many more protective products and accessories for your Polaris Razor on our website, www.rockymountainatvmc.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more how-to and product spotlight videos. Thanks for watching.